say the Golden State Killer terrified California for decades. But in his first courtroom appearance, suspected murderer and rapist Joseph James D'Angelo appeared dazed and disoriented. I don't know if you saw this, but there's the video. The 72-year-old slumped over, chained in his wheelchair, wearing that orange jumpsuit, his voice barely audible over the snap of photographers' cameras. But the former lead investigator in this case told ABC News, don't let D'Angelo fool you. This is all an act. He's a dangerous man. He is not the decrepit individual that you see in the wheelchair at arraignment. He is a very spry 72-year-old that is physically capable. He has numerous guns registered to him. To talk about this, I want to bring in psychiatrist Dr. Mark Wolston. He's also the host of a weekly podcast called Prison Letters. You look into the criminal mind, and this is this is one of the most devious ones I think we've seen uh, of late, certainly has tortured the nation, and, and, and certainly California. Um, what did you make of that video when he rolled in uh, in the wheelchair at the arraignment? Well, he's excellent at uh, in many years, it was such a surprise, he hid it from everyone who knew him. So he has the ability to compartmentalize and, and, and call upon wherever, what compartment he wants to go into. So if he can act insane or demented or whatever, he's going to do that. So I agree with the uh, lead investigator that says, you know, there's a lot more going on inside his head than meets the eye when he looks dazed. That lead investigator, Paul Hull, said that um, he'd been under investigation for some time leading up to the arrest and that uh, they had surveillance watching him and quote he's moving around like a young 50 year old man he's out riding his motorcycle bombing down the freeway at over 100 miles an hour so it, it, this is a guy by the way also who was known to taunt the media at the time to taunt his victims he seems to have sort of a narcissistic view of himself as well well he, he's a sadist we would all agree with that and what a sadist is a sadist likes to humiliate other people because inside they've off they are often a humiliation in their own life he's been surrounded by success Successful women who passed them by. You know, think of what men feel like when their uh, their spouse is supporting them. There's a real sense of embarrassment, humiliation, and shame. So when he goes out and does these crimes, he is humiliating his victims. And the and the problem is they escalated because the adrenaline rush is a is a thirsty. Uh, addiction, and so he kept escalating. It's true. You watch. They, they started out as rapes, which are terrible in their own right, mm -hmm. but then moved from rape to murder. Went from just attacking single women to attacking couples, tying up the male or the husband, and making them listen to that horrible oh, attack. Right. I mean, it's sadistic. It's sadistic. Sometimes I refer to in, in my uh, podcast prison letters. I drill down. Uh, I think his life has been the revenge of the nobody. And so he got a taste of being a somebody, and it was intoxicating. So help us understand why, because all of us have been disappointed, all of us have had our hearts broken at some point. What keeps us from going to the, or what makes him take that leap into sadistic and torturing and cruel and murderous? Well, here's a spin you've never heard uh, of for sadists. Uh, even some leaders we know, is way down deep there emotionally and psychologically needy. That's why whenever they experience rejection, humiliation, it, it triggers rage. For other people who are just needful, if you're disappointed, you don't, nobody likes that, but you shrug it off and you can deal with disappointment. But for people that are incredibly needy, mm. they need to get even with the world that uh, is... Settle the score, if you will. Absolutely. Last question. A lot has been made about the fact that he seemingly sort of fell off the radar in 86. What do you make of that? Uh, it, 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 it just may be that he may not have been as nimble to commit his crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it may be that it, it just reached a, a certain point. We don't really know what that is, but that's going to be the most intri intriguing thing. What happened in 1986... Uh, maybe there was a part of him that was was functioning on such a primitive level that he said, well, maybe I've evened the score with mommy and Bonnie and whoever. Mm -hmm. Plus, he was having children of his own, and maybe he had a chance to feel a little bit of power as an, uh, 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 in his own family. Well, that's, that's one thing. We don't know what went on inside that home. And I'm sure some of those details during the course of a trial, whenever it gets to that point, some of those details may be revealed. Really delightful to speak with you. Um, you. Quite the work you do in that podcast. Say the name of it. Prison Letters with Dr. Mark Goulston. Fantastic. Thanks for being here. Thank you.